everyone. You're with Mind Body Solutions again, and this is Amy, and I'm Matthew, and we're going to do the second video on inner awareness. Um, this one's going to be inner awareness more active. But again, I want to recap and reiterate the development of inner awareness from body to mind is something that is crucial to the realization of asana, not only for people with disability, but for everyone. But typically that level of integration of subtle sensation with more active sensation takes a quote traditional student years and years to do well. And what you're doing with when you're adapting yoga for people of all abilities is you're asking them to start kind of in the middle, start paying attention to the subtlety of sensation, changing the relationship to how the mind receives information from the body through the brain and getting the mind to listen to more rather than less without seeing the more as overly complex. And now that, I know those are weird words, but honestly receiving the part of the nervous system that is less tangible and less controllable is integral for utilization of the full potential of, created by our human nervous system. Um, this is not this idea of the subtle realization of sensation being integral. There's a reason why one of the limbs of yoga, if you know the eight limbs of yoga, is pratyahara, which is a withdrawal from the senses. So when I ask Amy, for example, to be a more aware here or what's behind her, I know what's happening. She can't be reading a book while I'm asking her to be aware of empty spaces around her body. There's a withdraw from the outer senses that is integral for the performance of outer action where inner and outer is balanced the way an asana is striving for it to be. So this idea of pratyahara, and I think it's really important to realize that this isn't meditation. That's a different limb. This isn't necessarily mindfulness. That's different. What we're talking about is getting the mind to quiet down. In, in, in the Yoga Sutras, it's referred to as the quiet in the oscillations of the mind in order to receive the fuller potential of, of human consciousness. Now, there's a reason why we're wired to not hear this part, the subtler part. It's because it didn't help us run away from tigers, right? It, evolutionarily, this is my opinion, evo from an evolutionary perspective, our, our brains formed around more controllable, overt sensation. So when the yogis are talking about pratyahara, they're at, and they're making it one of the eight most important things you can do in the yogic methodology, it's to be taken seriously. So in the middle of action, there are things that are going to be happening that, that would be more, quote, passive ways of developing inner awareness from our last video keeping them simultaneous with action. One would be keeping the tongue in the lower palate or the inside of the mouth soft. One would be being grounded in your own body and presence more e equally distributed through the whole body. One would be being aware of how you're moving through space. But that awareness is not through mental judgment. It's through repetition and practice and absorbing that level or allowing that level to make it to the mind. So in this respect, the idea of simultaneous awareness of yoga for insight, this is coming from the Bhagavad Gita now, chapter two, yoga for insight simultaneous with yoga for action and yoga of action. That's what you're aiming for. And that's what we're trying to show in some of these exercises we're going to do or yoga poses. And we really, really invite you to do them at home because the only way you're going to refine this in your own yoga practice, but also in refining it and facilitating it in your students is if you know what it feels like from inside to out. Because remember in our methodology, the MBS methodology, you are trying to facilitate asana from inside to out. So the first thing I'm going to ask Amy to do as she's standing on, on her feet and being balanced, all those things we did in the, the other video, I ask her to take a block now and put it between her ankles. Long way, right? And there's a couple things that's happening here. Remember, mind enters the body through reference. 
And so Bhikkhus Angar, I think, introduces props into a yoga practice because he's continually transforming and enhancing reference so the practitioner can start to experience even more possibilities. So in this, in this pose, I wanted to squeeze the block. And so, Amy, what do you experience when you squeeze the block? Well, when I squeeze the block, I, I begin to feel a sensation of, of rise up through the, kind of up through the midline of the body. And, and remember, we say that part of your base in other videos, part of your base is actually the lightness and the depth and the subtlety that allows you to recognize an upward lift because most of her brain or mind is hearing the squeeze of the block. So the idea that you can squeeze the block and then receive a transformation in sensation through your body is exactly why we're wanting students to develop inner awareness, right? So, and it also, so now, um, inhale, take your arms up over your head. We're just trying to show, remember, I really, I really want you to start, we're gonna only show a couple poses, but I want you to be able to generalize from what we're saying. So if she squeezed the block and actually right, takes her arms overhead and extends toward the ceiling and drops to the floor, when she releases the block, everything drops and gets heavier. Take your arms back down. So the grounding, remember, we got universal, we got core sensations going on. It's not just that, that when she squeezed the block, a muscular action's happening in her legs. That's bringing the muscle to the bone and that's allowing for another level that's of sensation in the nervous system to be perceived going up. So the grounding of the legs through muscular action is part of what makes her arms lighter over her head. Inhale and take your arms over, up over again. Don't, don't squeeze the block, right? Take your arms over your head. I hope you're doing this at home. Now, as you're trying to go down toward through your heels and toward, toward the, the sky, squeeze the block and feel things grow. Again, recognizing the sensation of awareness moving from body to mind is part of what is the goal here. And again, if she doesn't squeeze the block and releases, her whole body will drop. The inside of her body will drop, re-engage, learn to receive the transformation created by muscular action, and then come on down. Now, this is really important when you're teaching people limited physical ability because they might not be able to do a whole bunch of muscular action, but they can do some muscular action usually somewhere, and they need to re learn to receive the transformation in sensation when they have an active part and how it flows into the less tangible part of the mind-body relationship. So there's this really amazing line from BKS Angar in, the, in a video he made that I saw in the first year I was doing yoga, so that was back in 1991. Um, where he talks about, here's the line and it's hard to understand, um, but it's not when you get it, when you understand it intuitively, when my body is one, this is BK Sanger now, when my body is one, my mind is in pieces. In other words, if I can't differentiate different parts of my body, my mind will, my will will have to over try and it'll shatter my awareness into pieces. So when my body's one, my mind is in pieces. When my body's in pieces, my mind can be one. In other words, more calm, which is one of the aims of yoga. So in this action, if I were to get her, there's the sweet zone of activation, right? So now as she's squeezing the block, I want her to over squeeze the block, right? So, so it's, it's, it's being, she's gripping really hard and I can tell you, it's not good. And, and her ability to be connected to the whole room diminishes because she's so focused here and with so much muscular action. So then don't over squeeze the block. I hope you're doing this at home because this stuff is experiential. There are certain truths you're only going to get by experiencing them. Words don't do them justice, right? So now as she over squeezes the block again, recognize it's harder for her be connected to the room. What you want is to find in every yoga pose, and this is a principle, in every yoga pose, you want to find the sweet zone of activation. If she doesn't grab the block at all, lets her legs be flat. Remember, we showed that that made her arms heavier over her head, right? So obviously no action has diminishing returns too, right? So she's got to find the sweet zone 
between underactivity and overactivity. So she starts, inhale, take your arms over your head. So again, I hope you're practicing this at home. Don't squeeze the block at all. Start to squeeze the block. Keep increasing the squeeze of the block until you start to experience a diminishing return and your mind getting caught too much in the action. And then release. Now again, go just like you found the four corners of the bottoms of your feet in the other video. Here, you're trying to find the, the, where the effort is maximized for its potential to help the yoga pose. Inhale and take your arms over your head. Hope you're doing this at home. Find the sweet zone of activation and know that in every single asana, especially for people with disability, because you don't want them, their, their margin for air is less. You want them to live in the sweet zone of activation, not no action, not too much action, but the place where effort and effortlessness are combined, right? So effortfulness and effortlessness have to combine. And to do that, the subtle sensation has to integrate with the active sensation. And then take your arms down. So to connect the dots to B.K. Sanger's line about when my body's in pieces, my mind can be one, right? If my body's one, my mind's in pieces. The best of all of these is beyond the sweet zone of activation, but to be able to integrate more parts of the body with your mind being aware of it. So, so as you're standing here in Tadasana, I want you all at home to, find, to squeeze the block, find the sweet zone of activation. But now I want you to add something. I want you to be more aware of the skin along the side of the block, on the side of the foot. So not only are you squeezing the block, but you're adding intelligence of multiple directions at once. So you're tilling the soil of your awareness. You're making there be an effort and some, a sensation you have to receive. And I hope you can feel this at home. And if you can't, you need to practice it. That when you not only squeeze the block in one direction, but include a different direction, the lift in the chest becomes the best yet. How that's possible, I have no idea, but it should bake all of our noodles. So in this next demonstration, I'm gonna have Amy do a classic yoga pose, um, downward facing dog. And this is, we're gonna have, this is such an important pose and, and can go in so many directions. We're gonna have a whole video that focuses on this with our adaptive students. But the classic pose, is you place your hands and look how she does it with precision. She's paying attention, turns the feet under, come on up, come up, comes up into a classic pose. There's a lot of really important things happening in this pose. Awareness of hands and feet, the movement of energy drawing out of the hands, up through the spine to where the ceiling hits the wall, the anchoring of the legs to enhance that sensation, right? So this is a nice pose. Amy's been doing yoga for a long time, but I'm gonna, if she weren't to be in a great alignment. I want to watch, try to get you to see when she comes into what a lot of beginning students have, come kind of turn your back out. Like just see how much more strain there would be in that pose, right? Because this, the energy is coming out this way. There isn't clarity in the legs. So when she transforms it back into the more classic pose, I can tell you right now, that's way lighter than what she was doing before. And I really hope you're doing this at home and then come on down. So what I want you to do, remember the mind learns more from losing something than gaining something, which is part of why adaptive yoga students can be our often better yoga students, in my opinion, because they're starting from what's lost, not from the easy access to what's gained, right? So this next time, Amy's gonna, you know, her fingers are spread in that pose. Amy's gonna hold up your hands like, to this close other thing. I was gonna keep her hands closed I want you to do this at home because you're not going to believe what it does to the sensations in your pose. This is so loud. This is like rain, rain and gall. It's so loud, right? So she, she's going to start with her hands spread. She's going to come up into the pose. She's going to do her classic pose that she knows and is familiar with. And then she's going to bring her fingers together. And I'm telling you, that pose sucks from inside to out. It, you can't breathe as well. There's way more strain. There's way more mu muscular action. It's not happy. Now watch when she spreads her palms and, and fingers. 
and then can readjust and carry the pose upward. I really hope you're doing this at home. Now go back, and so this is connected more to prana. The flow of prana brings the fingers together. It's disconnected from the natural flow of prana. So the prana is not going through her body as smoothly. Now she opens her fingers again and palms again and travels the sensation of relief from being more aligned through her whole pose. And then come on down into child's pose. So one of the things that is, I remember reading early on in my own yoga practice that all of dog pose, this is something Bhikkhu Sangar wrote, um, all of dog pose is mirrored in the hands. And at first I thought, oh, that means you have to get the hands right. Yeah, but you also have to re realize that there are things that can transform the whole sensation of your pose that are not things that you would directly think of or things that you would directly control. So although her, she can control her hands spreading out in dog or facing dog, she does not have control over the change in prana that it creates or the change of awareness that it creates, the flow of awareness through the body. But your ability to hear such transformations, that ability needs to be grown and worked with. It needs to be refined. You need practice. You need all the things that any yogi needs. So in this next demonstration, we're just going to take arms and legs wide. And, and there's a lot of things. So as we get more active in the development of inner awareness, we're also combining more core sensations. And we're also beginning to utilize more principles of asana, which we're going to make three separate videos on, but everything's starting to come down. Different currents right now are coming into a flow of what a yoga pose is when it, when the universal parts of the pose are actually, um, emphasized. So I'm going to have Amy take her arms and legs wide. So already one of the, in Gita Iyengar's preliminary course book, she talks about that in standing poses in general, you're teaching simultaneous awareness of joints and while they're moving, right? So take your arms down for a second. So that's something, awareness on the inside of a joint, I can teach to anybody. So the fact that Amy's got her hands on her hips right here while she's waiting, smart, because she's actually combing the hip joint, right? Which then allows for the receiving of, of input better through the brain to the mind, right? So. So inhale and take your arms wide. So I'm going to draw attention to her ankles, her knees, her hips, her shoulders, her elbows, her wrists. But I don't want her to flex muscles to do it. I want her to locate it in space. And I want her to combine it with sensation. So I'm not telling her, imagine your ankles, your knees, your hips, your shoulders, your wrists. I'm saying, find them. And then I might even give a more activating instruction move from the center of the chest through the center of the elbow through the center of the wrist okay so there's like what do you what's the center of a joint and then take your arms down step your feet back together what's the center of your joint so at home i hope you're doing this along with us at home i want you to sit there and take your arms at your sides and go okay how would i locate the center of a joint Right, And it, when I'm trying to find my elbow, of course I feel my tricep and bicep in my forearm. But I have to open to the space between the spaces that I can control in order to realize the empty part of my joints. That level of allowing that there's an empty part of your sensation that is not your imagination. When I try to find the empty part of my elbows, the empty part of my elbow joint, it doesn't help if I furrow my brow and try harder. It's a completely different action. It's not even an action, it's an allowing. So as you're standing here, try to open, and, and there are all these tricks. Yoga teaching is so amazing. There have been people that have figured out instructions. In order to feel the center of your elbow, you could open your elbow pit, the space in your, the skin of your elbow, like a blinking eye. But in order to do that, broaden gently the skin across the palm of your hand. Keep the emptiness company right here. Feel it in the shoulder and start to open to what you can't control. There's a part of you of you 
and your body that you don't get to directly control. And this is integral to yogic realization and why pratyahara is a limb and why the development of inner awareness is so integral in our method. So now Amy's going to take her arms and legs wide again. Again, she's doing it from the, she's pinning her hips, her own hips. These are natural things that more advanced yogis start to do. So now I want her again to access the empty space in her joints without, with receiving it, not imagining it, right? And so certain instructions help. But now I'm going to give, remember, we're trying to integrate proprioceptive awareness of yourself in space and interoceptive awareness in your body. So the physical instructions might be stretch out through your pinky finger and pull your bicep back towards your face, right? Or extend up beyond your fingertips and feel the inner edge of your shoulder blades. Again, I hope you're doing this at home, right? To actually feel. But now I'm going to start to reference the empty spaces in the pose. So I want her to feel the line along the inner edge of her thighs. In order to feel that inner edge, I want to feel the inner edge of what she can control to open to the possibility and the sensation of the space between her legs. And now I want her to feel, make, take that connection between her legs and put it to the underside of her arms. Now, what's weird is if you're doing this at home, you might have just felt your arms get lighter. That should bake your noodle, right? That's crazy, right? And so the fact that the proprioceptive instructions actually help the effort in your body is amazing. So I'm going to have her turn her palms up. And from the space awareness and the memory and the space awareness of the space between her legs, I want her to take her arms up over her head right and then when she's up there and i know when she does it from empty space the the movements glide better but now i want her to try to find the space between her palms right the space between her elbows to do it i want her to feel the space between her legs and the space on the side of her body when that becomes that holistic when you can receive the empty spaces in the poses along with your effort you actually are coming farther down the road of yoga realization and then take your arms down and legs back together. So this, one of the things that is an unbelievable line from BKS Angar, it's his translation of a crucial sec section in the Yoga Sutras, is that you're aiming for when effortful effort becomes effortless, you've encountered the fourth method of pranayama or breathing, which seems really strange, but I think one quick way to realize what he's trying to say there is to say that the whole body breathes, not just your lungs. All your skin is breathing. There's a whole bunch of things happening. All parts of your mind-body relationship should be aware and touching the space around you too. So take your arms and legs wide. So we're doing the same thing again. And again, we hope you want you to be doing this at home. So she's doing all the stuff, filling the whole vessel living in more spaces, being in the empty spaces, not just the spaces she can control, all these things. And then she's going to bend her hands and put her hands slightly in her rib cage. Take a couple of breaths into the subtlety of your fingertips, noticing the inward dimension of your breath. Now come back to the whole pose from this, we just enhance grounding. Right? And then inhale and take your arms out, out wide again. Again, I hope you feel at home a more refined yoga pose here. Now, there's reason why this is a good place to make sure it stays calm. That's your diaphragm. Right? Bring your hands back there again. Right, And look how she touches it lightly. She's not squeezing. She's using her sensitivity so she can receive the sensitivity. Right, Sensitivity begets sensitivity. Right, and then inhale and take your arms wide again. And now fill the whole vessel, all the empty spaces in the joints. From the center of the chest, center of the way, here comes the will, here comes the effort. Feet pointed straight ahead, roll the thighs away from each other. All these instructions are attempts to facilitate the movement of awareness from the inner body to the outer body. Because the deepest parts of yoga, the heart of yoga, travel from the inside to out, at least in our opinion and then jump or step your feet back together. So, so the other thing about her hands on her diaphragm, which hands there again, right? This is another one of those lines that I've been thinking about for, since I started yoga for 31 years, 31 years ago, is that the intersection, so another line from Bikesangar, 
the intersection of the subtle body with the physiological body occurs at the diaphragm. In, a, in the previous video on inner awareness, I had Bethany not stick out her rib cage because I knew that was hardening her diaphragm. So the intersection, and you take your arms down your sides, the intersection of your subtle awareness and your gross outer body awareness, because I'm going to say it intersects at your diaphragm, which makes sense. It intersects at your breath. That makes a lot of sense. In this final demonstration, we're going to another classic yoga pose. Again, we want you doing this at home, right? And it's triangle pose, trikonasana. Because what's going to happen here is that the arms and legs are going to be wide, but there's going to be a different relationship to gravity. The spine is going to go from straight up and down to the floor to horizontal to the floor. And that's going to create a whole cascade of changing sensation, right? Jumper step your feet wide. Now, a lot of times, and maybe you're one of these people, you think that more yoga happens the farther you are into the pose. Take your arms wide. Now, remember the synchronous movement of joints is beginning to occur. All these movements you want to reference to all your joints. Even when she turns her left foot in and right foot out, she's trying to make sure she's paying attention even to the back wrist while that's happening, right? You're trying to stay expansive in your body. Now, a lot of people come down and don't use props. She's got a block there, but what happens when you don't use a prop, right, is you come down, come on down, and try to come down too far because they think more yoga happens down there, and things start to collapse. This starts getting heavy, right? This is not a utilization of the subtle body in the pose. And then come back up, right? This time, putting your arms down, put the block in where you want it. So now just watch the difference. And I hope you're doing this at home because a lot of people reach for the floor too fast. There's a great line by a senior Angar teacher, um, Ramanan um, in Trikonasana. I've been to the floor and back and God is not there. And it's a really good line. About, about trying to think that more is more in yoga, in, in asana, it's not. It's about how you get there, right? Inhale on an exhalation, come on down. <clears throat> and so now, because she's not off balance, one of the core sensations, her spine gets to be more lengthened, rotating up. As she rotates, so, so this, you wanna feel the outer rim of the back heel here too, right? And so if I wanna actually help her find her subtle body, I might just give her some reference here. Makes her smile, right? Because some of the struggle comes out of the pose. Right? So, but the importance though, all this is about the development of inner awareness. If now she rolls her belly, does something wrong, or rolls her belly down to the floor, lets her arm go forward, this pose gets super heavy. I want her to realize the freedom of coming into alignment, not just the struggle of trying to do alignment. Teach from the sensation of freedom and relief as much as from the sensation of effort, and then come on back up. Turn your feet straight ahead. Jump or step your feet back together. So part of what I want to get across here is that, is that it's in the subtlety that the pose truly starts to transform. The integration of, of the potential of your nervous system, not just your ability to control your body. That's essential. Eventually, through a more, for a more traditional student, that doing a pose 10,000 times with tons of control, you'll eventually realize the pointlessness of all that control, and you'll start to let up on the control, and you'll realize this other level of sensation. In the MBS method, we're trying to facilitate that subtler level of, 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 the, of subtle sensation into the poses more directly. When that happens, the pose creates more joy and happiness. The only way that happens is if you retrain your own brain and your own mind to receive state passive so it can receive even while it's acting, even while you're using effort. So remember, let's go back to the line. When effortful effort becomes effortless, how could there be effortful effort and then it's also effortlessness? They have to be different universes coming together in the pose. There has to be a, an ability to access, ease, and be in effort. And that's the radical, in my opinion, one way to describe the radical realization that yoga is trying to pass down. And if you pass it down like that, 
It's a universal realization that does not depend on being able to do triangle pose. Thank you.